We turn now to more on McCain's political legacy and what his passing means for a heated Arizona election with our regular Politics Monday team, Tamara Keith of NPR and Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report. Welcome to you both. Uh, this back and forth between President Obama and Senator John McCain went on right up to the end and actually beyond the end a little bit. Tam, we played a little bit of the final message that was read this morning uh, in Arizona, and he had uh, some words that could be interpreted as a message about President Trump. Certainly. Uh, there was a passage, and I've, I've written it down, so I apologize for looking down, but in this final letter, he says, we weaken our greatness when we confuse our patriotism with tribal, tribal rivalries that have sown resentment and hatred and violence in all corners of the globe. We weaken it when we hide behind walls rather than tear them down. Um, President Trump obviously talks a lot about a wall, um, and, and this, you know, it, it wasn't officially a, a, a message to President Trump, but it certainly it certainly reads that way. And and this comes as President Trump uh, put out a statement uh, on Twitter that um, did not say anything nice at all about John McCain, at least initially. And then today there was a, a longer statement, uh, and and that involved lowering the flags to uh, half half staff. Um, where there was half a sentence where he said that he respected McCain's service to the nation. Amy? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, this is my contrarian side coming forward, but I think to honor the life of John McCain, it'd be best for all of us in the news media to spend time on John McCain and not time on Donald Trump and what he's tweeting and not tweeting and with the intrigue in the office, was he going to say this, was he not going to say that, and to spend it instead, as the news era did, on a whole retrospective of his life. What I find fascinating, too, about the era that we're in right now, it didn't begin, it didn't end uh, during uh, John McCain's tenure there. Um, it didn't start with Donald Trump. Um, the Senate has become a much more polarizing partisan place. And the folks at 538.com did a great piece the other day where they looked at John McCain's voting record in the time since he's been in office. His first decade in office, he voted 88 percent of the time with Republicans. That put him about with the Republican in the White House. That put him basically in the middle of the Senate. Half voted fewer times with their party, half more. Now, at 87 percent for the last 20 years, okay, so point lower, he's in the lower third, okay? So the, he didn't move. The Senate moved to be a much more polarizing place. Yeah, and, and in terms of his relationship with his party, it was, it was always a complicated relationship. Um, at times, he was in, in lockstep with the right. Republican Party and Republican orthodoxy. At other times, he was out of step with it. Uh, and, you know, if you listening to conservative talk radio, there, there was not a lot of love lost no. for Senator McCain on, on the far right. And a complicated relationship with the party in his own state. And tomorrow, they're going to go to the polls a Republican primary yes. there, the, the candidates for the other Senate seat, for Jeff Flake's Senate seat, uh, the three Republican candidates, two of them no big fans of John McCain. What does that say about how I, politics is moving? That's right. I think it's fascinating to see that the, President Trump is much more popular among Arizona Republicans. I mean, a lot more popular. I looked at the last poll that I found was a CBS poll from June that McCain's job approval rating among Republicans in Arizona was 20 percent. So there's a reason that all of the Republicans running to replace Jeff Flake in this primary tomorrow are trying to attach themselves much more closely with President Trump than they are with John McCain. And we're going to, I think, see that continue in a whole bunch of other places where these, quote, unquote, mavericks who are retiring now are going to be replaced by, if they're replaced by a Republican, one who fits much more in the Trump mold. Yeah, and th there's a reason Jeff Flake retired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very right. good point. Yeah. And, and the governor, Doug Ducey in Arizona, is going to have to name a replacement for Senator McCain. He says he won't do it until after, obviously, the, uh, the burial uh, on Sunday. But he faces the choice. Is it going to be right. someone like John McCain, or is it going to be someone more like Donald Trump? And is it going to be someone who is sort of a caretaker who will be in that post for two years and then 
and then it'll be open season and everybody can can run for it. Uh, one one name that has been floated and who knows if this is the direction he would go is Cindy McCain, uh, John McCain's widow. If they were to go that direction, it would follow in sort of a long tradition of wives being named to their husbands' seats uh, after their after their husbands have died. Um, it, back in the old days, that was that was how women got into Congress. Right. Well, and just from that poll that I noted, that folks in Arizona in the Republican Party do not are not embracing whether it's John McCain or Jeff Flake the maverick outsider, not sticking with Trump, not sticking with the party line kind of uh, pers persona. So my expectation is Ducey's going to nominate somebody who is going to be a reliable vote. And that's going to be important for Mitch McConnell going into these next few months, where he will now finally have 51 votes. Uh, about a minute left. In Florida, another primary tomorrow, the Senate, one of the uh, gov gubernatorial candidates really wanted President Trump's endorsement, got it. He's running against a Republican who worked through the ranks, did all the things you're yep. supposed to do if you want to advance in the party and become become governor. What 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 does this say about where we are in politics? That this is Trump's party now. And if you are on the Trump team, it can it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a win in a primary, but it gives you a tremendous boost. Right. And, and Ron DeSantis, the candidate who is hugging President Trump closely, has this ad that is absolutely hilarious with his children. And just like you, you have to see it to believe it. But it's all about how much he loves Donald Trump and has gotten the endorsement of President Trump. There is there is no doubt where he's headed with that ad. Tamara Keith, Amy Walter, Politics Monday. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. You're welcome.